Hi everyone. I had a few students asking me how to actually work with the data once they finish running the Vita program, so I figured I'd give a short um, live coding demo session on how to actually work with this data. And so uh, this is actually a problem that all of us face, not just with uh, models like a Vita, but we all end up somehow with data files where we have some sort of description at the beginning of the file, as we do here, and then we have line after line after line and column after column after column of, of all these data entries that mean something. And we want to take this data that's in this format and actually read it into our program so it's in some sort of useful format that we can actually do things like stats or plotting with. Um, so I'm going to live code with you here and show you how you can actually do this. So I've, I've done a cat of the file here and you see we have about, what is this, 19 lines of, of descriptive text saying what each of the columns are. Uh, and then I, I ran the Avita experiment for about 5,000 updates, so you see it goes down to update 5,000 uh, and has all of these various recordings. Um, so if you recall, Titus showed you how to uh, at least open a file, and uh, this may be something new to you, it's called a with statement, and um, this is how you can uh, make it easier to work with files because you can basically say with and you can open up the file so my file is located at um, data and average dot dat and so that if you recall this open statement opens up a file to read and then you can specify the name of that uh, of that file so you say as in file and what this does is that any code that's in this indent here will have this in file um, that it can work with and then as soon as let's say you know um, I'll just put code here and then as soon as we go back here and we start coding here um, that file automatically gets closed so that so this with statement is useful for a lot of things but I particularly use it for opening up files um, okay so anyway so now we have this file open so now if we want to actually, let's say, read it line by line, we can do for line in inf, oops, in file. And then let's just print the lines to see what we get. And so as you can see, it does go through line by line and prints everything there is there. Okay, so of course the first thing that we want to do is to get rid of all this header text. So perhaps the easiest way uh, to differentiate between uh, the actual data and the header text is to maybe count the number of spaces there. Um, there's various other ways, you know, so, so for example, if we know exactly how many lines there are um, between uh, the start of the file and the actual start of the data, we could also just skip that many lines. Um, but this is sort of a more dynamic way of doing it. So we can do line.split, and by default that will split on space. And then we can get the length of that, and that will give us how many columns there are, basically how many words there are in the in the text. And we can actually print the line with the count as well. And so basically, what we see here is that all the header text have uh, eleven or less lines, and then all the data lines have exactly sixteen columns there. So we can use this as sort of a way to tell the difference between data entries and uh, and actual uh, or and the header text so let's give that a try if we say if the length of the split text equals 16 let's print that line just to make sure that we're actually getting the correct data if we look through all of it indeed that's the case now I, I highly recommend that if you're going to parse the data this way I strongly recommend that you make sure you print out uh, all the data uh, line by line so you make sure that, you actually, that you're actually getting the data that you want to work with. Okay, so now that we're getting the data, we can again, we can split on spaces here, and then now we have uh, all, all the data columns um, split up by their entries. And so let's say in this case, uh, if we go back up to the file, Let's say we wanted to plot merit. So we know that the second column is the merit, right? That's this one right here, 97, 97.28, so on and so forth. Um, 
So if we wanted to do that, remember that uh, the indexing starts at zero. So if we want the second column, we have to index into index one, and then there we go. Now we have the 97, 97.28, and there you go. Now if we wanted to save this to actually plot, we could create a list called merits, and then instead of printing the merit, we could do merits.append, and then at the end, now we have an actual entire list of merits. And then, because we're writing our Python notebook here, we can actually just turn on the PyLab inline feature, and that allows us to just plot the data. So if we do plot merits, and there we are. So now, now you see um, we've we've nicely plotted the the trend of merit of merit over time. Um, but then, so let's say now we want to actually uh, clean this figure up a bit, right? I mean, the x-axis is clearly not labeled properly, um, and that's because we're we take a, a snapshot every hundred updates and not every single update. Um, so let's go ahead and fix that. So we can do that using x ticks and First, we know that um, it counts from 0 to 50 here, so our range is going to be 0, 51, and then we can change um, the actual range that it prints. So we can do 0, um, 5,001, 1,000, and we want to count every 10 here. Um, so this, this may be a little confusing, but basically, um, I'll, I'll just print it down here. This a range command is printing out uh, uh, numbers starting from zero and all the way up to fifty every other ten. So that's going to match these call these uh, these entries here. And then similarly, what we really wanted to do is count from zero to five thousand every thousand, right? So um, that's what this a range command is doing here. So when we run that, it prints out a whole bunch of ugly stuff, but you see that it actually corrects the columns there, finally. Okay, and then perhaps let's say we also want to add um, some x labels and y labels. So we can do x label, and we're labeling this update because that's what uh, the X is counting here is the number of updates that the Avita system has gone through. And then we can also change the Y label. And we're plotting merit, so we want to specify that we're plotting merit. Okay, so there you go. That's, that's how you can um, take raw data like this from a file and run it through Python with a short bit of code and then plot it right there in the same cell. Um, go ahead and give me an email if you have any more questions about this. Um, and I'll also note that um, this is a very basic way of doing data munging in Python. Uh, there are more advanced libraries that we'll cover later in the semester that make this much, much easier than it already is.